let's imagine that we continue to raise the pH. Who deprotonates next? That's right, this nitrogen over here would deprotonate. That would give us a net charge of minus one. And this threshold would be, we can actually figure out the PI now, but let's actually finish off our, our little thought chain here. Let's continue raising the pH. So let's higher than 9.6, that will cause it to deprotonate. So that's why it's That's right. Okay. And if we continue raising the pH, eventually this guy will also deprotonate. And now what I have on the board is the completely deprotonated form. Now what I have on the board is the completely deprotonated form, and this threshold was 10.5. Now, which of these represents the zwitterion? This one is the zwitterion. The zwitterion is the one that's neutral. The zwitterion is the one that's neutral. What is the PI? The PI is when we have the maximum concentration of the zwitterion. The PI is when we have the maximum concentration of the zwitterion. You're expected to know that definition. PI is the, I'm sorry, I should have been more specific. The PI is the pH at which, at which we would get the maximum concentration of the zwitterion. I should have said that the PI is the pH at which we get the maximum concentration of the zwitterion. Another name for that is the isoelectric point. That's the same as the PI. Now, remember that if the pH was 3.7, we would have about equal amounts of these two things. And if the pH was 9.6, we would have equal amounts of these two things. So how should we get the maximum amount of zero? Well, maybe it's kind of logical that that would be when the pH is between 3.7 and 9.6. In fact, it seems logical to me that the maximum zwitterion is when we're exactly between 3.7 and 9.6. That's the formula you were just given in class. This, the zwitterion pi is just the average of these two pKa's. It's the average of these two pKa's. You won't have a calculator, so you have to take your time with that calculation. Is that what you got? No? I didn't. I, it, I just made sure that I, I had those numbers. I got 13 points and it's really bad at math though, so it's possible you're too. All right, I was just saying how careful you have to be, but I still messed up. I think it's 13. I still messed up. Yeah. That's right. So this should have been 13.3? Uh huh. So then would we get 6.65? Okay. 6.65, um, yeah. This part? Two goes into 13 six times. Mm -hmm. Two times six is 12 with a remainder of one. Point three, right? Don't you bring the point Then you bring the three down. Then 2 goes into 13 six times. Now we have to add on an extra 0, and 2 goes into 10 five times. So we should just do this as a long division, rather than try to cut corners with a short division. So I got a PI of 6.65. Well, I was going to give you guys a whole big lecture about how you need to be careful to do the division on paper so you don't make arithmetic mistakes. That's kind of spoiled since I made an arithmetic mistake anyway. But in any case, I would have been even more likely to make an arithmetic mistake if I had been trying to do this in my head. So you should definitely try to write out these steps on paper. So our PI is 6.65. That's how you find the PI. Great. Can there be any tricks with that? I mean, besides some complex, complicated molecules with weird, funky side chains? And well, the, he doesn't have to give you amino acids that are in the table. You could make up brand new molecules as long as he tells you they're pKa's. Okay. He can give you any type of thing, any type of acidic or basic things, as long as he tells you the pKa's, and then you'd have to use the same approach. Now notice, one thing I noticed that gets people confused here is notice that as a thought process, we started by imagining we were at a very low pH. 
and we drew what this would look like if it was fully protonated. And then in our imagination, we gradually raised the pH. I've noticed that sometimes people get confused and they think that the PI has something to do with a very low pH, but that was just part of the thought process, right? Actually, the, the PI was at a relatively high pH. It was just our thought process to start with the very low pH because that gives us a very simple form where everything is protonated. Okay. So also that means we're not saying that you should always imagine very low pH for any problem. It's just useful to imagine a very low pH for the beginning of figuring out the PI. And that's a pH value at the very end, okay. At? At 6.65 is the pH at which... This is the pH, pH, this is the PI, which means it's the pH at which the zwitterion would have to be at its maximum concentration. Here's some other questions he could ask you here. Uh, let's see, one question he could ask you is, uh, all right, so yeah, when would we have, when would this ion be at its maximum concentration? What's the average of these two numbers? When you mean um, most concentration, it's like here are a bunch of these amino acids floating around or something, and there's a lot of this one. I mean, That's right. We... So in fact, there's always going to be multiple forms of the peptide in solution. There's always going to be multiple forms of the peptide where some are protonated to different extents than others. What we want to know is what's the pH at which the zwitter ion form has the maximum concentration? Like what should the solution be for mm -hmm. this one to be at the most? Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Now, the question I was going to ask you is... So notice, if he asks you, what is the pH at which we get the maximum amount of this form, you would average these two numbers. How about if he asks you, what's the pH at which we get the maximum amount of this form? You would average these two numbers. There's no special name for that. That's not called the PI, but he can still ask you that question. Or he can ask you, what's the pH at which this is the maximum form? Well, then you would average these two numbers. That's not the PI, but that's still a question he could ask. Those are, I've seen those questions in the exam book. Also, he could ask you, what's the pH at which we have equal amounts of this form and this form? 3.7. What's the pH at which we have equal amounts of this form and this form? 10.5. So those are the two different types of questions that he likes to ask in the exam books. Sometimes he asks, when do we get the maximum concentration of a single ion? And sometimes he asks, when do you get equal concentrations of two ions? So those are the two types of questions. And for both of those, it's helpful to go through this whole process of starting by imagining a very low pH and then gradually raising the pH and drawing out this, this thought process. What about the ends? Or they don't what about them? Maximum of negative two. So when could you get a maximum concentration, say, of negative two? Yes. Well, the way, to get, uh, there is the, uh, the way to get the maximum concentration is to have an infinite pH. Okay. So that the, at this point, you just keep raising the pH indefinitely. So he probably wouldn't ask you that. But if he did, the higher you make the pH, the more we'll get of this form. So there really is no single re answer here. That's right. And the lower you make the pH, the more you'll have of this form. So those are questions that would be a little weird. He might not ask that. All right, now like I say, this takes practice. You definitely wanna practice this on all the examples in the exam book because I certainly find um, when I try to do these quickly, I tend to make mistakes. For example, I'll forget that some of the side chains are acidic or basic or, well, anyway, it's easy to make mistakes. So this takes practice to really be able to get full credit on these types of problems. So a big lesson here is we were trying to figure out which parts of the peptide are acidic or basic. Well, we know the N-terminus is an amine, so it's basic. The C-terminus is a carboxy, carboxylic acid, so it's acidic. And the side chains can be acidic or basic. And we also know that these things, these peptide bonds inside are not acidic or basic. Even though if they were separate amino acids, these would be acidic and basic functions. They lose their acidity and their basicity when they form the peptide bond. It's obvious that the carboxy carbon has lost its acidity because it doesn't have the OH group. And we know now that this is not basic because there's a resonance form where it has a positive charge. Okay. 